Welcome to this OST2 lecture about the secure storage of the TPM and its various use cases. The non-volatile memory of the TPM comes in various sizes and depends on the TPM vendor. The NVRAM benefits from the TPM authorization and we can protect our data with password or TPM policy. The TPM policy gives us the benefit of enhanced TPM authorization and we cover this in our advanced course. The TPM's NVRAM provides four types of access. First and foremost, we have the operations in bulk where we can write and read whole chunks of bytes into the memory. This is limited depending on the vendors. Usually the TPM can take up to 2048 bytes at once, but this really depends. We need to know that the NVRAM of a TPM is measured in kilobytes. The intention here is to provide secure storage for the most vital, critical, and sensitive data. Another access way is to use the NVRAM as counter. This is a very powerful tool because the only way to change the data is to use a dedicated TPM command that can only increment the counter with one at a time. Also powerful is to set separate bits using a bitwise OR operation. This access type will not be covered as it is similar to the increment counter and using the information from the one, you can work it out on your own how to have an NV index of type bits and how to use the NV set bits comment. In this lecture, we'll cover the writing and reading in book and the use of NV counters. The last type is a special type where we can use the NVRAM as platform configuration registers. PCRs are covered in our advanced course. Here is a typical workflow for using the TPM's NVRAM. First, we need to define an NV index, which is public information about the size of our data and what type of authorization are we going to use. Once we have an NV index, we can perform one of the write operations. This could be write in bulk, this could be the increment counter on one of the other two types. Remember that some write operations are not possible depending on what type of NV index we chose. And we'll see that in a bit. We can always read our NV index as long as we provide the correct authorization. Of course, it does not make much sense to perform a read operation before having any write operation. This is why I see this as the typical workflow. Otherwise, we will just read zeros. Depending on your use case, if you have stored data that needs to be there for the whole life cycle of the device, it is unlikely that you would want to undefine an NV index. Undefining the NV index destroys the access to this data region. We would need to recreate our NV index and it is unlikely we would be able to read out the data back. The undefined NV index operation usually has consequences that go beyond from just missing the public information about our data. This is essentially the delete operation of our NVRAM data. There are use cases when we need to update or store a larger portion of user data, of application data, configuration data. In these cases, we need to undefine our index and increase its size. Sometimes we would need to change its authorization for various reasons. This is when having the undefined command makes sense. In some scenarios, it would not be used. Therefore, this is an optional step depending on your use case. As mentioned, there is more than one type of NV index. As the name suggests, this is the standard type. When we can do write operations in bulk, then we have the counter type, which allows only incremental changes to the NVRAM specified. One constraint here is that we can have a maximum of eight back byte values. This gives us 64 bits, which is a lot. This counter can be used for almost all use cases. It is rare to see a 64 bit counter overflow, but again, be aware that there is a limitation of the size of NV index of type counter. The next two types, bits and extent, are for access that we will not cover this. The bits type is again an eight byte value that 
can be changed only with bitwise or operations. And there is a separate TPM to comment for this. We're going to go in detail about how to use an NV counter and going from there, you can understand how to use bits just looking at the menu of the TPM2 tool. The extend type is when we want to use the NVRAM as a PCR. And because PCRs are limited on TPM, this is a good way to extend how many PCRs we have on our TPM. The last two types are very recent, very modern, with adding GPIOs that can be controlled or read by the TPM. These new types will also not be covered in this essentials class. The TPM2 NV Define tool helps us create NV indexes. By default, it sets the NV index type to ordinary, which means we can use write operations in bulk. Be aware that the maximum bulk size is typically about 2048 bytes. It is important that when we create our NV index, we specify some sort of password. So only we can read the data that is going to be stored. NV indexes are created on demand. Therefore, its numbering depends on how many NV indexes we have so far. Unless we have designed a scheme where we know um, our index zero will be for storing a certificate. Our index one will be storing for the system configuration and so on and so on. It is usually not a bad idea to go with a location by the tool where we just receive the next index. At the same time, this could lead quickly to eat up the space that you have because you're not really keeping track of how much memory did you use. Therefore, I would recommend to design a really brief memory map of how much NVRAM you have and what you want to store there and, and define your own indexes. This way, you would know exactly what data is stored where and you can ask the tool to generate a specific NV index with specific number. Indexes require hierarchy to be tied to. Usually, this is the owner's hierarchy. Once we have created our NV index, we can write data to it. The NV index is just a pointer. It allocates for us space in the NV RAM. So in all TPM2 tools, we would specify which is our NV index and the TPM will know where to place our data, including in cases where we don't write the complete size available to a certain NV index. As we have in the example here, let's assume that our document that we're storing has only eight bytes. We would then want to write the remaining 12 bytes, but we would again pass only the index, but then we would pass the same index and adjust our offset setting, telling the TPM to two, to instruct the TPM to start writing from an offset of eight. It is mandatory to specify an input data and this could come from a file or from the standard input. Please note that if you want to use the standard input, we need to provide a dash immediately after the dash I option. So everything is put together. Once we have written our data to the NVRAM, we would want to read it out to confirm the successful operation, to verify. This can be performed with another TPM2 tool. And what is important here is to provide the right authorization. This means the right hierarchy, the right hierarchy authorization, and the size, how many bytes do we want to read? Because if we do not specify the number of bytes, we would receive the complete size of this NV index. Let's say we have an NV index of 20 bytes, and but we have stored only eight. We will receive our original eight bytes and then 12 bytes of undefined data, which could be zeros, could be anything. Similar to key generation, the TPM has many internal types and flags. TPM2 tools do a good job of taking care for most of these important flags and settings for us. In other cases, we need to manually set some flags. One such case is the use of a counter, envy counter. Here I have shown on the left 
a table in the TCG specification showing the most used flags, which are owner right, outright, and policy right. Depending what is the type of authorization we use, these flags help us specify are we going to have a password protection or are we going to have a policy enhanced authorization for our NV index? On the other hand, the owner right is an important flag telling that the NV index can be owned and used by the owner hierarchy. And at the bottom of this table, which is not the end of the actual table, this is just where I cut the screenshot, we have a field TPM underscore NT which defines the type of the index. Remember, TPM2 NV define creates an NV index of type ordinary. If we want any other type, we would need to manually set this field. Before going further and talking about the NV counter type, I want to address some of the other interesting non-volatile bits and flags we have that you might want to set manually at some point. I will highlight two of these options on the right, the others I have put for completeness. The NVWrite Define and NVWrite Locked are actually connected. The one is the option where we instruct the TPM how the NV index work, saying that this NV index can be locked. And the write locked is the actual flag telling to the TPM this NV index can no longer be written to. Another interesting one is the NVWrite ST clear flag. This is very useful when you want to write some data and as long as the device remains on and working, the data cannot be changed until the next time the system is rebooted. Perhaps we should also mention the write at once bit. By default, this is not set. So you can write the complete size of your NV index in multiple operations. But if this bit is set, then you are required to write all the data at once, meaning that if you write less data, then you cannot write any more data. Now let's talk about the NV counter type. This is really a powerful tool where we can securely track critical events because of the TPM authorization. And we can increment this counter only by one only when providing the proper TPM2 authorization. To define such index, we would need to do some extra work. We would need to set the attributes for our NV index manually. And because we are doing this, and we need to set that bit to have the NV counter type, we would also need to set some other attributes. Otherwise, we might not be able to access the NV index. These two attributes are TPM A and the outread and TPM and the outright. As the name suggests, this essentially tells the TPM that if an out value, typically a password is provided, then we can read or write this NV index. And the NT field as shown earlier, specifies the type of this NV index. Having a value of one tells us that this is an NV counter. You can go back and see the table again, and you would see the different values. Zero was ordinary type of NV index, where we used write operations in bulk. With the NT being equal to one, we have an NV counter, which can only be incremented using a special comment, TPM2 NV increment. Remember that the size of an NV counter is limited to eight bytes. This is also important when doing the NV define operation. Notice the dash S and 8 afterwards, specifying 8 bytes. 